Welcome to your personalized deep dive. Today, we're really getting into something that shapes so much of our online lives. Social media algorithms. We've got two great sources you shared, everything you need to know about social media algorithms from Sprout Social and that really interesting CEO Today piece, how social media algorithms control our mental well-being. Yeah, it's fascinating how they complement each other. Sprout Social gives us the nuts and bolts, the how it works, while CEO Today tackles the so what, the impact on us psychologically. Our mission today is to kind of weave these together, give you a clearer picture of this, well, powerful force. Exactly. So let's start right at the beginning. What is a social media algorithm fundamentally? The Sprout Social article puts it simply. It's a set of rules, basically instructions for solving problems. For social media, that means filtering, ranking, um, deciding what content we actually see. They're like the invisible hand guiding our feeds. And you really can't underestimate how important they are. I mean, imagine, as Sprout Social points out, just getting everything posted by everyone you follow all at once. It'd be total chaos, right? Yeah. Just an overwhelming flood. Oh, completely unusable. So algorithms are the solution. They sort through that mess. Pretty much. Sprout Social calls them intelligent librarians, which I think is a great analogy. They're constantly working to figure out what you specifically are most likely to find interesting or valuable and then serving that up. Okay, so how do they do that? How do they know what I find interesting? Well, according to Sprout Social, they're watching everything. Uh, your behavior, your interests, what you click on, what you linger on. If you interact a lot with, say, posts about sustainable fashion, the algorithm learns that and starts showing you more content like it. It's pattern recognition, essentially. Right. Makes sense. So what are the specific clues, the signals they're looking for? It's Sprout Social lists quite a few. Engagement seems huge. Likes, shares, comments. Absolutely. Those are direct signals that people find something worthwhile. Then there's relevance keywords in the post, hashtags used. They help the algorithm categorize the content. And timing matters too, like when something is posted. Yeah, timing and frequency, and also recency. Newer stuff often gets a bit of a boost, at least initially. But it's also about your interactions, who you follow, how often you interact with specific accounts. That builds a sort of relationship score in the algorithm's eyes. And things like profile authority. Does having more followers mean your stuff gets seen more? It can play a role, yeah. Follower count, overall engagement rate, location and demographics can also filter what you see sometimes. No. And the type of content, video, image, text, Sprite social notes, many platforms are really pushing video right now. Video seems to be king. It often is, yeah. Probably because it holds attention longer. Which brings us to another signal. Watch time, especially for videos. How long you stick around watching is a big indicator. And of course, virality, if something starts taking off, the algorithm jumps on that. Wow, okay. It's a lot of factors. Does Sprout Social give examples for specific platforms? Like how Twitter uh, X does it? It does. With X, for instance, they mention how you can follow specific keywords. So if you follow astronomy, you'll see tweets with that word popping up more. It's quite direct. Okay. And LinkedIn, that's more professional. Right. So as Sprout Social points out, LinkedIn tends to prioritize stuff from your direct connections. If people you know are interacting with a post, you're more likely to see it. Makes sense for networking. They also suggest content based on your stated interests. And they suggest accounts to follow too, right? Based on who you interact with or what you like. Exactly. Both X and LinkedIn do that, trying to expand your network or feed based on your existing behavior. It's all about personalization. But it's not the same algorithm everywhere, is it? <laughs> Definitely not. That's a key point in the Sprout Social piece. Each platform tweaks its algorithm based on its goals and how users interact with it. Twitter X looks at location, language, interactions, relevance, recency, that tweet cred reputation score. Tweet cred, right? Yeah. And Facebook, it's massive. Yeah, Facebook's algorithm, according to Sprout Social, heavily weighs timing, your demographics, the source's credibility, the type of content you usually engage with, relevance via keywords, overall engagement and your existing connections. They even calculate a relevancy score. A score for every post. Wow, what about Instagram? It has so many different parts, feed, stories. Right, Sprout Social breaks it down. Instagram uses different algorithms for feed, stories, explore, reels, and search. For the main feed, it's things like recency, who you follow, your own activity, likes, shares, saves, comments, the type of content, 
post info like its engagement and your interaction history with that specific account. So it knows if I always like posts from a certain friend. Exactly. For stories, it looks at your viewing history, engagement, and how close it thinks you are to the creator. Explore is about discovery, so it looks at post popularity, your past explore activity, and info about the posting account. Reels is similar, your Reels activity, interaction history, the video's relevance and popularity, and account info. And TikTok. It feels like it learns really fast. It does seem that way. Sprout Social says TikTok heavily focuses on user interactions, likes, shares, comments, completing videos, searches, follows. Also location, video details like captions, sounds, hashtags, even device settings. And definitely watch time. Okay, YouTube. Video is its whole thing. Predictably, YouTube looks at video performance engagement, click-through rate, watch time and retention are huge. Also, recency, your watch search history, demographics, location. Makes sense. Yep. What about LinkedIn again, beyond connections? Sprout Social mentions LinkedIn filters for quality, like spam versus high-quality posts. It assesses relevance, predicts engagement probability, rewards consistency, considers credibility, recency, and favors short video and well-structured longer text posts. Interest. That's very visual. Yep. Pinterest ranks based on topic relevance, pin quality, engagement, the linked website's quality safety, the account's quality and consistency, and recency. Reddit is community-driven, right? Upvotes. Primarily. Upvotes, downvotes, total votes, recency, and comment quality are key signals, according to Sprout Social and Tumblr. User interaction, again, likes, reblogs, comments, follows, plus post content like tags and media type, timing, and user preferences. It's quite the complex machinery behind each feed. Okay, let's shift gears. The CEO Today article talks about the impact of all this, the mental well-being side. Yes, this is crucial. The article argues that while personalized content feels good, like the platform gets you, it can also well, exploit vulnerabilities. Exploit them. By figuring out exactly what keeps you hooked, what keeps you scrolling. And often the CEO Today piece suggests that tends to be sensational or emotionally charged stuff. Things that trigger a strong reaction, not necessarily things that are good for you. Like outrage bait. Could be. Or just things designed to be addictive. The article mentions the endless scroll and autoplay features. They leverage the algorithm's predictions to keep feeding you content, triggering dopamine hits that make it hard to stop. This can mess with focus, sleep, real-world engagement, leading to dissatisfaction. And the comparison trap. That feels very real on platforms like Instagram. It's very real. The CEO Today article highlights this strongly. Algorithms often amplify these super polished, idealized versions of life. You see constant streams of perfection, and it's almost impossible not to compare your own messy reality. Which can lead to feeling inadequate. Exactly. Low self-esteem, anxiety, especially as the article notes, for younger users. It mentions the Instagram mental health lawsuit, which directly points to this issue pushing perfect life images and using addictive designs. That's worrying. The article also mentions echo chambers, right? Yes. Because the algorithm shows you more of what you like and agree with, you can end up in a bubble where you rarely see different perspectives. It distorts your sense of reality, makes you think everyone thinks like you, or that opposing views are more extreme than they might be. And that can make disagreements worse, more volatile. The CEO Today piece suggests it can, yeah. It can increase emotional reactivity and tribalism. You're constantly reinforced in your views, and when you do encounter something different, it feels more jarring, more threatening. Hmm. It sounds quite negative, but did the CEO Today article offer any hope? Can algorithms be used for good? It did offer a glimmer, yeah. Suggesting that algorithms could be designed differently. Some platforms are apparently trying things like prioritizing content about mindfulness or well-being. The idea of intentional design, building algorithms with mental health in mind, giving users more control. More control sounds good. How can we get that? Yeah. Or just cope better. Sprout Social had tips for creators, right? Maybe they give us clues. They do. Their tips for creators also show what the algorithm values, like asking questions to get comments that boosts engagement. Tagging others increases visibility. Using the right hashtags and keywords crucial for discoverability. Posting at the right time. Yep, optimizing timing posting consistently, making more video because platforms often favor it, writing engaging captions with hooks and calls to action. Experimenting with different formats makes sense too. Definitely. And measuring performance with analytics, seeing what actually works. Sprout Social also suggests jumping on new platform features as they sometimes get an initial algorithmic boost. So those are for creators. What about as regular users? The CEO Today piece mentioned awareness. 
Awareness is the starting point, absolutely. Just understanding that your feed isn't random, that it's being curated and how that might be affecting you. And advocating for change, pushing for more ethical design and transparency from the platforms. It feels like a big task. It is, but collective awareness and pressure can make a difference. And AI is involved in all this too, isn't it? Sprout <laughs> Social mentioned that. Oh, massively. AI is what makes these sophisticated algorithms possible. It's used for everything from flagging misinformation and moderating content to the hyper-personalization we experience and the real-time analytics creators use. It's constantly learning and evolving. So it's clear that what we see online is far from accidental. It's a result of these incredibly complex algorithms weighing dozens of factors. Precisely. And understanding that, understanding both the mechanics from sources like Sprout Social and the potential psychological impact highlighted by CEO today is really key to navigating this space mindfully. Whether you're trying to build something online or just trying to use these tools without letting them, you know, use you. It's a lot to think about. This dive really just scratches the surface, doesn't it? It really does. It might be worth reflecting on your own usage, maybe checking out some of those resources further, thinking about what you notice most about how algorithms shape your online world. It's an ongoing conversation, really.